Hey there, I'm Josh, and in this video I wanted to talk about my thoughts on the Roland SP404 Mark II after a couple weeks of ownership and use. Now, I think that Roland have made a couple of really great steps forward with this device compared to previous SP models, as well as um, one or two maybe sideways or backward steps that I'm not as big a fan of, which, I mean, isn't too bad. Before we start, though, I do want to make it clear that like, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you an SP404 Mark II. I'm definitely not sponsored by Roland. Would be cool if I was. I'm not. No piece of gear is right for everyone, and I'm not interested in getting you to go out and buy something. I really just want to talk about what's jumped out at me in these first couple weeks of use. And if there's anything that I haven't included in here or that you have any questions about that I don't address in the video, um, you know, please leave a comment. Let me know. Firstly, the most obvious change from the previous SP models and the thing that I think generates a lot of at least initial excitement is the inclusion of an OLED screen. The previous models had more of like a uh, alarm clock style screen. Having the OLED enables you to do a bunch of different things. You can browse folders to find samples to map to pads, but honestly, I think the most exciting thing is being able to see sample waveforms. Sample slicing on the 404 Mark II is just way easier than it was on the 404SX. And there's also other features added for chopping samples. So for example, if you're in the chop menu, you can start playing a sample and then tap subsequent pads to assign little markers for spaces to slice after. It is just super fast, and it's honestly like a really fun way to chop samples. I think that the MPC devices, like the modern ones, have a similar feature called lazy chopping. I don't know if it has the same name on the SP, but um, that's the name that I use for it. But even for just changing start and end points of your sample, being able to see the waveform is huge and it makes it just a lot easier to get really precise. The screen can also give you more information in pattern mode, which I found is not really as exciting as using it for sample slicing, to be honest. I mean, the SP404 Mark II sequencer is mm, maybe a little more fleshed out than the SX sequencer, but honestly feels pretty similar to use. And I never really was like hurting for a screen when I used it. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's different from like a step sequencer like you might find on say the Synthrum Deluge. This one, you aren't like punching in notes on a grid. It's more that you're playing it in live and then it plays it back to you. And you can, you know, you can do it unquantized, which is very cool, or you can do it quantized, which is also very cool. I'd say that if you're familiar with the SX or A, you're gonna be familiar with the MK2 sequencer. It's fun and I think it really suits the device. And adding to that, I also really like the effect selection. You've got the vinyl SIM that was on like previous SP404 models. They've also added a cassette SIM, which I think just sounds really nice and imparts a lot of really nice character. There's the lo-fi effect and the warm saturator, as well as the staples like having chorus, a really nice reverb, delay. While there might be effect pedals that have the 404 Mark II beat on like a single effect, I don't think I've ever seen like a multi-effect pedal that sounds as good at everything as the SP404 Mark II does. For me though, the biggest change is the ability to sample audio over USB-C and also to send audio out over USB-C. My phone doesn't have a headphone jack, which probably isn't a shocker, uh, a lot of phones don't anymore, but it does charge with USB-C, so I have a USB-C to C cable that I just plug into my phone, I plug the other end into the 404 Mark II, and bam, I can sample right off of Spotify or YouTube. It's really immediate. I realize that might not be as exciting for people who are all about like sampling over say vinyl or even from cassettes, but for me, it just makes everything like really fast to use. And it's really easy to hear a song, be like, man, I really want to slice this up and just jump right into the 404 Mark II and start slicing. And speaking of sampling, they've changed the RCA jacks on the back for quarter inch jacks. And awesomely, there are two headphone ports. There's a, a quarter inch right here and then a 3.5 millimeter right here. Um, I just think it's a great consideration for whatever kind of cable you might be using. One feature that I've been less excited about is velocity sensitivity. So the pads can detect the velocity that you hit them with, which is really cool and does give you a lot of options for imparting some more character and how your samples are, are sequenced or resampled. Um, for me though, I found that the velocity just doesn't seem to be consistent enough. It feels like I'll impart the same amount of force and I'm just not getting the same volume response or I'll use like a lot of force and I'm not getting the maximum volume, which, you know, a lot of that might be due also to a lack of skill on my part with uh, finger drumming, which like fair, but I still find the implementation a bit clumsy and I've honestly had it turned off for most of the time that I've used the Mark II. And then there's the differences that I dislike. The first is that they removed the microphone that was on the SX and A, uh, which, okay, not a great microphone, but I really liked the kind of lo-fi quality of it and I thought it was really fun for like recording acoustic instruments. It's funny because the sampling over USB-C really lends itself towards immediacy, as does having the screen to chop samples. It feels like the device was made to be much more immediate. It's kind of a shame that they took out a microphone, which you know is another very immediate route to getting samples on for beat making. You could always record something onto say a phone and then sample that onto the Mark II, 
but it just would have been nice to have the microphone included so you didn't have to go kind of roundabout. Also, the battery life on the Mark II just feels a lot shorter than on the SX. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that probably has to do with the OLED screen. I'm gonna guess that's not really too easy on the AA batteries. But that being said, if you're planning to take this thing on a really long trip, you're gonna need something besides just slapping some batteries in there. Either a lot of spare batteries, maybe like an external power bank with an adapter, some way to power it a little more reliably than just putting some double A's in, because that's only gonna get you, I wanna say like two and a half hours of beat making. So if I were to sum it up, I'd say that the Mark II, much more so than a previous SP model, feels like a Swiss Army knife device. It really can do just almost everything. Um, there is MIDI implementation, like for MIDI out, that's one thing that I have not really used and I'm not interested in. For me, it's kind of like those bags of stale pretzels that you get on an airplane. Like, great, thanks, uh, not what I'm here for. Now the 404 Mark II, despite its upgrades from previous SP models, is still an SP through and through. So if you've used previous SPs and you like really hated them and you're curious about the 404, you can't get one used because, um, well, they're more expensive secondhand than they are new from a retailer. So I would say, just get it from someone that has a really good uh, return policy. For me overall, I love the Mark II. The removal of the mic and the shortened battery life, it hurts, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, being able to sample over USB-C and having that screen for slicing samples, it's just really big and it adds a lot of functionality that was missing from previous SP models. But that's where I'm at with the Mark II. Like I said earlier, drop a comment if there's something I didn't talk about that you think is really important, or just if there's something that I talked about, maybe not enough, that you'd like to know a little bit more about. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and hitting subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to see me doing some beat making on the Mark II, there should be a video there, I think. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, and I'll see you later.